based on the PTR propugs, a lot of uh, like in EU at least, it's a lot of Rhino Risa, and then it's it it starts out with um, Sigma Risa just to see how it goes from live to PTR, and players do realize Sigma Risa is pretty bad. Like you get deleted instantly, or and Risa survives, but everyone else dies, and then it switches off to keeping the Risa because if Fortify gets buffed. Why not play Orisa? That's the mentality. Uh, they switch to Winston, Hammond, Ryan, and along with side with that, you have to switch to DPS. Uh, for example, if you have Ryan or Risa, you can go McCree, you can go May, you can go Hanzo. But if you're running Risa with, uh, let's say, a ball, you don't have the necessary tanks to protect the backline if an enemy engages. So if you have a Pharah, for example, spamming. Uh, what's your thought on, on just the tank line, so to say? Okay, so... The interesting thing you say that because my wonder really is when the logic tree of all of the squishies gets panned out because in the pugs what we saw a lot of is experimentation or comfort picks or characters that might be deemed troll picks in a week right and my my question is does it just turn out to be that those heroes get they become the most durable picks so even though we've saw like very little Moira in the pugs, for example, a little bit here or there, but because she can run away and has fade, is that like the most important thing? I, I feel like every meta, we kind of talked about this a little bit before we hit record, but every meta kind of has its own personality. And I still think right now the defining principle is survivability, durability, cooldown exchanges. So for example, may having cryo freeze and wall that interrupts so many different things, Reaper being able to escape. I still think those are like the core pillar that can escape all sorts of things because otherwise if you don't have those abilities i think either dive wrecks you too hard so hard that you wouldn't even play things that could get dove or halt into something wrecks you too hard where those combos come through whether it, it, it we didn't see too much doomfist in the pugs as well but i i just i just wonder these brawl mechanics i feel like they're stronger than what has been represented in the gameplay thus far and whenever I see May Reaper get played, I start to just think I have flashbacks to the GOATS era where it was such an economical way to play that over the course of a full map and series and everything that you'll edge out eventually if you just use those resources appropriately the same way you would with GOATS, right? Like you would know picking GOATS that when it's reached its zenith point of strength that a lot of the teams would know, well, there's certain fights we don't win at all but we have, we have enough resources to win enough fights or outlast them, right? So a lot of these other strategies fall to the wayside. The only thing that makes me pause to that is because barriers are so weak now that range damage can come through, whether it be like Hanzo or Far or whatever, shooting down on those characters. But I think they play just so fast and are so durable that it might still outlast it. That's sort of my worry because on paper, I'd be like, Ball Winston looks like it runs over everything, but then they play May Reaper, and all of a sudden you have to swap. So that, that's my issue. I don't I don't know necessarily what I feel about Orisa Ryan. Uh, I I don't think I have as strong opinions against it as you. I'm kind of more neutral to it because yeah. I think if if you take into account what I said with May and Reaper, maybe they're just the most durable tanks in that mirror, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't I don't really know where to go from there. I threw a lot of, at the plate, so I'll let you pick it up from there. Mm -hmm. So with Risa getting nerfed, I feel like you don't have the time anymore to set up a halt punch or halt slam or halt flux, halt. Well, you do halt flux, but it, it's not as one directional, uh, run one directional anymore because in in on live service or goats you would play stacked together with uh, with the team, so it would be easy to get fluxes. It would be easy to when you halt them in, and uh, easy to get doomfist. Um, meet your strike with halt or, or something else you know reaper alt. now when you have widow hanzo you have targets or like players just spread out more halt affects two to three people at best never really four or five six as on live and that's why i feel like uh, you're, you're not really gonna get the same how to say one shot combos and and moira for example doesn't need a fade as much anymore um may doesn't need a cryo freeze as much anymore either Reaper doesn't need a fade as much either because before when when you would get fluxed and you didn't have a, a fade for as Reaper you would have to use beat to counter it or heal a lot um, 
but when you didn't have beat, for example, because maybe you want to use beat quickly or you didn't have charge or whatever, then that's when you need a fade. And I think that's how May Reaper, Doomfist, etc. came in or Amoira because because of these one shot combos. And just from watching Pugs today, it feels like Orisa is more of a just more of just a single target DPS hero now. She's basically a premium torp turret with fortify. Uh, while if you have a Reinhardt or Winston or whatever, whatever, the second tank, main tank, they get blasted, killed, and then it's a 6v5, and there's not much you can do that with that if the enemy is stabilized and, how to say, don't, don't end up on low HP and get picked or whatever, cleaned up. And Interesting. Yeah, and I feel like that also affects the way you pick your DPS then, because Hanzo is very popular now on, um, on Propugs and Widow as well. And if you if you have a one shot like a headshot on on a May as widow, cryo freeze doesn't help anymore, right? Same thing with Reaper. Same thing with anyone. And if we don't take Genji, we uh, we see a lot of BAP as an example. Um, do you have any thoughts on BAP and immortality field? Or I'll get to BAP. I, I do want to respond to the things you said. I I, yeah. I love what you said about character players being split. One thing I want to say. I noticed that as well, and I also think that's very healthy for the game because Ooh, it yeah. finally means we're in a world where high ground and crossfire and cover, all of those things matter again, which is great because one thing that was frustrating with the GOATS era and everything after that basically was that there was so much sustain that that stuff didn't really matter. You didn't really have to think about the map so much. Mm -hmm. Now you see players really having to like, all right, this guy's going to be on a crossfire here behind some cover. We're going to put Winston off to the side. We're going to put you know, BAP on this high ground, and it, it's a much more structured shooter game, which is just great to see. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree, though, that because you're playing that way, that Halt won't work once everyone's used to it. I hope you're right. Like, I, if I had a bet, it'd say which one I would prefer. I definitely would prefer that. But what I'm thinking is once we start seeing full six-man teams in in... Uh, a pre-made environment rather than a pug environment what's going to happen is that the pathing is going to sort of just carve through those split defenses and find the target that they can get the halt on just to get that one kill like i, I don't mm -hmm. know if i necessarily think halt's got to get multiple people you are right on describing on how it works on live and that's definitely true but i i think it just confirming a kill and just grabbing something so that you combo with anything that that pick would snowball from there but Hopefully not. Like ho in theory, you'd be right. And then when they go for that play, that goats esque, we're gonna run you down in a ball against one guy out of position. Whatever's on that crossfire, hopefully gets value, right? And with mm -hmm. less shielding and less protection and less healing from Moira and stuff like that, those frags from those power positions matter. Because that's what it used to be. And I long for those days where you'd have like a soldier on the high ground and a team would have. This is before goats existed, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, even I think back to like the monthly melees, right? I, I, ninjas in pajamas played four tank, oh, yeah, and yeah. a soldier was on the high ground just whittling them down. It was like, you know, we probably can't sustain on the point. That playstyle in the past used to just get punished and destroyed, um, and those crossfire angles work. So, I hope you're right, but I just fear that when there isn't like players playing so loosely that they take all these risky positions and uh, uh, go for this deathmatchy style that uh, that gets usurped. Like that, I think that is the ideal that we want to see from Overwatch where positioning matters and everything. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know, if, have I ex extinguished that point? Should we move on to talk about another thing? I, I can't remember what else you said. Some about like yeah. BAPs and backlines, is that what you want to go now? Yeah, well, some, some, some about backlines. Um, we've, we've seen a lot of BAP come in and, and there's uh, some players who fear that BAP is going to be the meta and only BAP. Um, the thing with BAP now is, if you run BAP, you don't really need the Lucio, so you can afford a Zen or an Ana. Zen is super nice now, but because of less shield, like, if you get a Discord on, you can melt people. The thing is, if if you're running, let's say, BAP Mercy, it's pretty bad, because you don't have much for defense, uh, especially if the Mortality Field doesn't cover. Uh, let's say that you run BAP Ana, same thing there. I... I a lot of Genji is getting played now, and especially sometimes with Anna and Mercy. So if you have Nanoblade plus the the Mercy Beam, this is usually for attackers because it yeah no no defense uh, ult. 
you you nano to Genji, damage boost him, and suddenly each slice or like blade uh, yeah slice does two hundred damage, and you can one shot a um, a lantern or yeah mortality field, and then slash the enemies and basically delete anyone. Compared to live war, even if you have lantern up, Genji doesn't get much play. A lot a lot of people ask me about Genji. Uh, I don't think Bastion comps are gonna survive as much anymore. For example, I don't think I don't think there's this like immortal comp as players on PTR have been looking for, or, like trying to force with Ryan Orisa, then Reaper May and Bap plus Lush or whatever. Uh, what what's your opinion or opinions on like DPS attacking into the supports like or or defending from from um, old combos like with. Um, Zen up or or maybe Bap. Like, what do you think we'll we'll see? Well, with Zen, I I do think Bap is a must pick with Zen. Like, if you have a sniper map, maybe Mercy Zen can work. But I I think with how aggressive some of the tanks are, that just like mow things over. If you don't have immortality field, I think tanks alone kind of counter your backline. So that's mm -hmm. why I, I think Bap probably is pretty required to play with him. But um, the old combo thing is interesting because, again, it gets me back to the point of the efficiency of it and whether that's worth the risk. So I think when we start to see in a more structured environment, maybe... Okay, so I, I've watched so much of this Genji play on the pugs. And it's, it's so great to see because I love seeing the character. I think everyone loves seeing the character. But there's been a lot of times where you might use... There's just so many ults that can interrupt it potentially that aren't even a support ult so may blizzard on the ground or uh whole hog or whatever things mm -hmm. that just straight up deny it access into the fight and my concern is that genji's mid fight in comparison to many, many other comps is so unreliable unless you perform some of these higher skill actions right so if you can outplay the enemy and get a good dive or get a good burst of damage with uh, you know, you can put the Mercy Pocket on Genji or hit a good anti or, or a lot of these other skillful abilities. When those things have worked, then I'm like, all right, Genji's cleaning up. This feels as it did in years past. But if those other aspects don't set up the play for him, then I, I feel he's just poking with these slow shurikens that don't do much damage either. And luckily, there's not as much shields in the way, so maybe that that's fine. But again, I, I just worry what happens when teams start bottling up together and just play a more boring style essentially yeah. just don't give genji something to farm and hide and jump out on something that they can't defend a big problem that 222 has brought up um with the balance of the game i mean i just want to see may and reaper nerfed essentially it's like the long and short mm -hmm, of this conversation mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. a big problem that has happened is that you have to pick two tanks and two supports whereas we may have theory crafted in the previous format well you can play ball quad dps mercy oh, and yeah. the entire team just is avoids you like everyone's using health packs everyone's split up so there physically wasn't a target for you to go on at any point because they're all surrounding the map playing a pure deathmatch style so when we start to say things like well splitting up on the map and taking power positions works now the problem is you're having to do that with characters that are more exploitable and you know that that's what comes down to it i i like um, I don't really know what the, the the tanks will pick, and maybe this could be another uh, question for us to discuss, but normally in Overwatch metas, a top tank duo sort of reigns supreme. And right now, the cool thing about the patch so far is I can't point to one and say the enemy could can't counter this. But I know with my experience with Overwatch, eventually we're going to find what is the most optimal combination of heroes. But right now, I have, I actually don't know what it is, right? Because mm. my knee-jerk reaction is Orisa Ryan might be the safest, but it also just gets blown over by certain things. Like, it, it, I, I can't see it working in every situation because of how uh, the team fights have to be structured for those two to do anything. Any, but do the players just have to learn that, right? So I, I'm mm. thinking, do an example. Anytime I've seen those two tanks, Try to defend, for example. It's like I can bold first, right? They, they put their Risa shield on the corner like they're used to, and Ryan's standing there with them. And then a dive comes in over the top and splits everything, mm -hmm. and they just get destroyed. Because like, yeah. like you said, it doesn't do anything. But my question is, 
if they realize they're not playing Sigarisa, like they're positioning like they're Sigarisa, I think when they stand there, when yeah. they really should be in a hole, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hiding, yeah. like lame, and then jump out and then, and then fight. So when they start engaging properly, is that when we start to see how strong it is? But yeah, and I again, I don't think Ball Arisa is uncounterable as soon as you start playing May, and I don't, I I don't know what even is next, right? Mm. Like Sigma seems really flimsy. I think Hog gets countered by Diva. And so the counters are really they're out in the open now in a way where it doesn't feel simple to solve but i assume there is a solution i guess is my conclusion mm -mm -mm. It, it feels it doesn't like... have to be necessarily but i i assume there will be yeah it it, it feels like um well I, I, I pretty much think the same uh you you kind of touch about a bit of, about um the how to say the hiding and coming out uh, tactic or whatever um what what for example if you play a super range spam comp like Farah hanzo would you say that destroys oh, yeah, the may reaper i hope so and I, like junkrat looked kind of nutty too yeah. with the 130 damage nades and if you don't have the zarya to punish the junkrat spam like junkrat might totally destroy may reaper now and that, that's a cool uh, aspect too that i i started to think about and i kind of said it earlier but because May Reaper and Doom, for that matter, they don't have the shields that they could just hide behind to set up the engagement. Mm -hmm. Things are getting shot on their team. It's not like they could just like, well, I just do my abilities and we have infinite protection, essentially, to create this close range brawl. So, yeah, you might, you might have a point there. But th I guess the end of this conversation is, do we think that there will be a, a final meta that gets rested on? Or is it this, like, is it the best patch we've ever seen? Either it's the best patch we've ever seen, and there's going to be a different meta for each map like we've all dreamed of having. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm not optimistic that Overwatch can achieve that with the format that we have. I assume that we're going to find that there's going to be a comp that fits in most cases. But I, I am at a loss to what it is currently. And it probably isn't uh, <laughs> Orisa Ride, but maybe, I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it is. I'm not, I'm not sure. Like I, it, it depends on the the way the pathing mm. and teamwork works out. And once mm. the pros and the six mans figure this out, then all the ranked environment copies it, right? And yep. and ideally, we wouldn't watch them play, and we'd have a great experience playing ranked for the next six months or whatever it is till Overwatch League, right? Till they yeah. teach us whatever the lame comp is that rules this patch. Yeah, like that's that's what I'm feeling. Like for me, it feels like. This is probably the best balance patch in a long time, like, or ever. And, uh, like, I had a last question here about Torb, for example. Like, even Torb is getting a ton of buffs, but it doesn't feel like it's super buff. Like, he's, he's not super OP or anything. Um, do you think Torb is hidden OP, so to say? Like, uh, he is uh, secretly strong, considering he he got overload, uh, overload uh, decreased. Then the previous patch, he got a buff to his lava. I, th I think, uh, I think. It, let's see here. It was uh, something like, um, I don't know, like reduced, uh, reduced ult charge. Ten percent faster charge, charge yeah. rate. Ten percent yeah, yeah. faster. Like, what do you think? Yeah, do you think like uh, he's gonna be strong on some map? Uh, like, let's say King's Rope first point, like really early on in a watch, or or will he be like a cheese pick, like a troll pick? Yeah, uh, I don't know if I have a strong opinion about Torb. I, I haven't seen him played much or played him much myself. I think my favorite Torb spot is Numbani A, because that's mm -hmm. like back to the Apex era of uh, competitive Overwatch in Korea. They, they'd they always put like Toby, for example, who play, uh, Lunatic High player, would, would put the Torb turret like on an off angle and on, on the high ground there. And... I think the cool thing is that we're even discussing if Torb's viable or not. And uh, <laughs> ultimately, it, it would be awesome to see a patch where all the characters kind of feel like they do their jobs. This is how I describe it. So you can put this for Torb, you can put this for, uh, I think Briggs kind of like an anti-dive character with Torb. Uh, that's how I see Torb, because he has the armor, which is good against dive characters. The turret punishes things that don't have protection. And with less shields in the game as well, the volume of damage coming out, maybe you could see Torb work. But I think I, I don't think he like takes place of Hanzo or May, who are more severe in their play styles with what they do. Um, but 
the fact that we can even theory craft that there may be a map where you put the turret in a window or something on kings and, and it work is a uh, incredibly exciting part of the game but yeah i, I kind of just come back to my my other point all the all the heroes right now feel like they do their jobs and the things that should counter them do mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. i'm hesitant to like this is how I felt when 222 came out at first. And I was wrong about this, really wrong, where I, I felt like all oh, the heroes were in their place until we learned the cheesiest play style that was the safest and most economical. And it's yep. some, it is something to be said. I think that was figured out much faster than this is getting figured out, though. And yeah. the reason why I think that is is because the gaps between heroes don't feel as severe anymore. It's not like this is way better than that. So it's hard to really detect when something's... Um, actually superior because the context of it is more nuanced where it's not like you know on the live version of the patch now when people started to realize how good doomfist was it was like well this just this guy just can't die there just mm -hmm, isn't mm -hmm. something that's efficient enough that can do anything to him or stop him really so we might as well just mirror the doom reaper uh shenanigans it's it's hard to see anything that's that severe now because there just isn't really protection from from things, whether it's uh, with barriers or healing. Uh, I think yeah. low-key, I don't remember if we've mentioned this yet, the Moira nerf is my favorite nerf. Uh, uh, the shield nerfs are great, too. I don't know. They, they compete. So I think the Moira <laughs> nerf is low-key, like the secret uh, gem that's solving some of this because of the damage break points that it creates, where when oh, she yeah, healed yeah. 80 a second, the tanks, like, did nothing. So, like, if the tanks fought something and Moira healed it, it was like you're just charging coalescence and mm -hmm. you're helping her basically so there's no point for you to like play winston or ryan in my opinion against a good moira because she would just farm up the damage you're trying to do but now since 65 you know ryan does 75 a swing winston does 60. when you get in and fight something and you're focus firing it's making these flanker characters especially like tracer and genji look playable when yep. i'm a little hesitant and thinking they're good but when the tank can set up to like equalize that healing then there's a movement to the game now where tanks actually can create space again, where they press W, they say we're focusing this, and you can actually kill it now, <laughs> even though there's all these crazy uh, sustain abilities that definitely keep things alive. But the healing itself isn't as severe. And I, I think once you take that out, once you take that Moira super healing, super stat healing away, then you start to think, well, there's Immortality Field, there's Ananade, but these are abilities that are much easier to deal with than just statistically she exists off on the corner and you can't hit her because she has fade and just pumps healing into you forever like i think that's a much more healthy interaction and, and if she wasn't nerfed i think we would be in a worse position for sure where she could outdo a lot of this play i think for sure genji just wouldn't be even look like he ever could have a, a thing to do in my opinion yeah. um but there's yeah that's a long essay for you so yeah <laughs> i'll end that part there no i'm dude i i really appreciate that uh, the, the exp extensive answer because like you you uh, you indirectly like even touch on on tanks needing like good positioning now you, you can't really stand out in the in the street anymore with a shield protecting you and it, a lot like so many players are gonna lose sr because of because of like <laughs> patch just change you're not lying man you're not lying so yeah, uh, so before we round this off, um, what's what's uh, what's some links you know that you want to plug? What's some content that you that you have coming up? What's uh, you know what's what should we look out for when uh, when searching for your watch? Oh, uh, definitely more coverage on the patch. I mean, I next next week when the patch drops, I might even be streaming it. So I'm excited to maybe get back and actually playing the game a lot myself. I think a lot of us including the players in your pro pugs there the ranked environment with the state of the balance is just it's just terrible at the high levels like it's mm -hmm. just not even fun unfortunately luckily the game's pretty well balanced underneath like masters but as soon as you get up to like gm it, it's just it, the heroes that you have to be slaves to in the in the meta it, it's just it was terrible so even if we find one comp that's best out of all this play styles that we've discussed it's going to have movement it's going to have respecting the map geometry it's gonna have a lot more skill to it which means it'll be a much more fun game so mm -hmm. um more more positive videos about the game hopefully if if um everything we say turns out to be true
make sure that you subscribe it really helps uh, a lot if you subscribe and uh, leave a comment if you like the, the content let me know what you think uh, do you have any own opinions thoughts ideas questions feel free to let me know and uh, as always thank you so much for watching hope you like it and i'll see you later